Hi guys, welcome back, it's episode two, and today I want to talk to you about the multimeter. Uh, any kind of buzzing young technician, these are one of the things you want to get yourself is a multimeter, and it's a great tool for checking things like your batteries, alternators, and any of those electrical circuits. So there's some of the basics that you kind of need to know, and I'm going to run you through that right now. Okay guys, so this is a pretty basic multimeter. Um, it's not a really expensive one, um, but it is pretty decent. It does most of the things that you're going to need to, to be able to do on any car for any kind of small electrical checks. So over on this side, you've got the uh, VDC, so that's voltage direct current. So on a car, that's exactly the setting that you're going to need it on for checking any anything on there, like the battery, etc. Obviously, this multimeter also does AC, so if you need to check anything at home in your electrics at home, then you'd want to use your AC. It's not recommended because obviously the voltage at home is a lot higher than what you're getting on a car, particularly on just a normal car. Um, and then at the bottom here, you've got the ohm symbol, so that's for checking for resistance. You can also use that for checking continuity. And then around on this side, you've got the um, amps, so if you want to check the amount of current in a circuit, obviously if you're doing that, the best thing to do is a, an amp clamp rather than actually trying to use um, an amp meter like this because the maximum this can go up to is 10 amps. And the chances are a lot of things on the car actually are gonna be working over 10 amps. So you're better off using an amp clamp for checking things like amperage in a circuit. But the main things you wanna be using is um, voltage DC. If you get one fresh out the box, it probably won't have the leads in it and you, you'll have to uh, select which holes you're going to put the actual lead in. So the black is, should be fairly straightforward, but the black one goes in the black hole where it's got the com. So that's your earth. And then you've got two options for the red probe. So you've got one for your voltage, for your um, ohms, resistance, and then one for milliamps. And then you've also got another option over here for your 10 amp max. So at the bottom here, it does say that it's fused. Okay, so if for whatever reason you go over the uh, 10 amps, it will then just blow a fuse inside the uh, meter. And the same over on this side, you've also got one for your milliamps, so 200 milliamps fused. Okay, um, you know, 200 milliamps is not a lot, so that's why I kind of recommend as before, realistically, if you're gonna be starting to check amperage, ideally you probably want uh, an actual amp clamp, so you can put the clamp around the particular wire that you're looking for, and they typically go can go up to 100, 200 amps. Uh, so it's a much more expensive type of meter that you're gonna need for, for measuring that. Um, but today, all we're talking about is uh, voltage, and uh, resistance are the two main ones. So as you just saw there as an example, it's quite simple to check for voltage. Okay, so it's got a nice little stand on the back of this particular multimeter, so it makes it nice and easy. Obviously on a car, typically you're working on 12 volts. So if we go around to the volts DC section, and to 20, um, you just put your probes together, make sure it's all on zero, and then we're good to go. So in this example, I'm just going to use a uh, square battery. Obviously, these work at um, 9 volts. It will tell you on the battery. So we're expecting to see 9 volts. It should have a positive and negative on here. So we've got negative there and a positive there. So we'll see the positive is the red one. The negative is the black one. As you can see, as you set up down here, I'll talk to you about those in a second. Um, but you've got your negative and positive on there, on there. And that's a good battery. So we've got 9.59 volts so that battery is fully charged okay so let's check the battery on a car then so once you've located your battery uh, you can set your multimeter up so we're going to set it up to the 20 volts range i'm going to put my positive probe on the positive terminal of the battery and my negative probe on the negative terminal of the battery and that will now give me my reading and here we've got 12.25 volts so a perfect battery in good health will be 12.6. So you can see here that my battery is slightly below that at 12.25. Um, so if you do have a battery charger, you could put a battery charger on uh, just to top it up. Uh, charging it overnight will be enough. Um, but 12.25 volts uh, on an engine, which is in good health with no difficult difficulties in starting, should start fine. If your battery voltage is below 11.5 volts, the chances are your engine is probably not going to start. 
and you may have caused some damage to the actual battery itself. So you could try charging it up, but you may find it may not be able to keep the charge long term. So I'm now going to start the engine up and now we can see what our battery reading is now. So you now you can see it's up to 14.6 volts. So my alternator is working correctly and that will be putting some charge into the battery. If I now turn the engine off, you can now see that the battery charge is starting to drop back down to its uh, state that it was in a moment ago before I started the engine. So now, now let's say for example we want to check um, resistance. Okay, so if we go down to 20 kilo ohms, obviously the higher that you're going up is the higher amount of resistance. And let's say for example we can check now one is effective it means that it's open circuit so it's obviously it's not touching anything and if we put the probes together they should read zero um these are can be quite sensitive so even if you start to hold them with your hands you can sometimes get some uh, readings coming up so that's why it's a good idea when you're doing any resistance check measurements that you don't uh, actually touch the ends of the probes because it can affect your reading because effectively it's just gonna make a circuit between your fingers okay so for example then we might want to check um, a sensor so this is a coolant temperature sensor uh, it's what they call a um, NTC so negative temperature coefficient so as the temperature goes up the resistance value should go down so if we it's quite tricky to get inside here to measure the two pins Bear with me. Okay, so you can see there, there is a resistance value. So if I can get my fingers on it and try to warm it up, we should start to see a change. So it's very slowly going down. I'm trying to just keep my finger on it, to try and warm it up. So it's very slowly going down. If I just take it out and just put it in my hand for a moment and try and warm it up. Bit of friction around there. There we go, it's gone down to two point something now, isn't it? So as it starts to cool back down again, that should the value should start to go back up. So it's a very quick and easy way to just check uh, resistance. Okay, um, whilst we're on the topic of checking resistance, one thing that you should never do is um, put it across any other live um, kind of consumer. So, if you're checking something like this, like the coolant temperature sensor or any sensor, ideally you need to take it out of the circuit, so, so remove it. You definitely don't want to put it across the battery like that and never put it across anything like an airbag um, because effectively all we're doing is the way that the um, multimeter works in this case is that it's putting a small amount of voltage through one end to the other and it's basically just making a calculation to see how much voltage it gets back. So if I put in voltage at this end, I'll see how much you get back this end if it's the same amount of voltage then i know there's nothing restricting my kind of current flow between that piece of wire so i'll just get a piece of wire so i can show you show you that so just as an example then so this is my piece of wire you see i've just uh taken some of the insulation off the end so again we'll put that on the air and that end to that end it's a bit tricky so you can see then there's no resistance in that piece of wire. I'm just going to touch the ends. This hasn't made any difference um, in this example, but you can see there's no uh, restriction to the current flow in that piece of wire. So that's a good piece of wire. If you was getting a reading on, on this, then that would give you an indication that there's the potential that somewhere in this piece of wire, there's a break or um, there's some form of corrosion in there.
okay um, so that's kind of like a quick test if you've got any electrical problems you want to check, check a piece of wire you can do the resistance check as I said before the best thing to do though is obviously disconnect it at either ends obviously check that the terminals in the plugs are correct and they're not bent and that it's a tight fit in as well you can see there's a little tiny gap in between there to check to make sure that that is nice and tight if you're checking the ends of um, any kind of connectors but that's it guys that's a quick overview of your voltage and your resistance on a multimeter okay thanks for watching if you like this video and you want to see more hit that subscribe button thanks a lot guys